Butterflies. In this video, I'm going to be doing my review on The Source of Self-Regard by Toni Morrison. So, y'all, this book, I really... It took me a longer to read it than I thought it was going, but it was just so much shit in here. And it was so fucking good. Like, I loved... At first, I thought I was going to be bored. But honestly, I really enjoyed reading her essays and her speeches. I enjoyed them so fucking much like i don't even know like I, I turned into a real active reader reading this and i started marking off the shit that i i liked and i fucked around and was highlighting in this book i didn't even care i was just like i love this fucking book i love that she started off i think this was the first essay or the first speech that was in the book before we can have a final solution we must have a first a second and even a third and i it's just something about that that to me and I, I feel like I feel like we're very adamant that racism is a problem and injustice is a problem. But we don't really ever have a plan to get there. We just automatically it needs to end, which is right. But how are we gonna get there? Like what's the plan? What's the demands? Like what are the steps that we're gonna take to get there? It's not gonna it's not something that's gonna go away tomorrow. It's not gonna happen because we protest just like that's gonna go away. We have to take steps to get to that point to where it's not there anymore. But what are the steps? And that's the thing the fact that she said that, I love that because as black people I feel like we cause a big uproar when something happens. We protest, we're upset, we fighting about it. But then all of a sudden somebody does something that pacifies one person and then we don't ever hear about it again. It's like we captures the world attention but then we don't do anything with it. So it's like, so what are the actions? What's the next step? Okay, after the big protest, after we get the attention, what's the next steps? What are we gonna do to keep that attention and solve the problem? It can't just be, oh now the world has our they had we have the world's attention and they're looking at us and now everybody's quiet. It's like what are the steps that we're gonna take? Because I bet you any money, a lot of people are getting really relaxed right now because, you know, of our new president, Joe Biden, which is don't get me wrong, I don't have a problem with him. But that doesn't mean we could just relax because the Cheeto is out of the office. He wasn't the only person that was part of the problem. We have to stay on it. We can't just be relaxed now that, oh, you know, he's out the office now. So we can chill out. No, that's, no, we have to keep going. We have to keep pushing, keep making, keep going upwards, not down. Like, no, we need to keep making upgrades. We can't just stop. She talked about so much stuff in this collection. It's not just about race. Like she touched on um, the language of war and how it's become childlike, which I agree. Because when you look at the fact that other countries, mainly America, are starting a war with another country because they want something that's on that in that country on that country's land, and they don't want to give it to them. So now, oh, we're gonna start a war. We're gonna take it. Is that not childlike? Because I told you no and now you feel like you have to come and have a war and take it. It's not yours. Like a lot of the wars are, are are like this. And it's not pointing fingers at the soldiers but the leaders that start the shit. It's like look at what you like so you're starting this war and putting our life putting our people lives in danger is because you want to be a bully like tell the truth it's it's very much child like it's not really so much strategic anymore. It's more of I'm telling you I want this and you telling me no so now we're about to come to war and we're just gonna take it like that's that's not how you do things that's not diplomatic at all but whatever that's you know I don't know anything about that that's not my business and I said what I said so I mean there's nothing you can do to change my mind but I said it and then I came to a part that was in here that I found not necessarily hard to read but just bizarre when you think about in school we are taught to love our forefathers and our forefathers did this for the country and our forefathers did that for the country and they just they made our country what it is to be that's what you're taught in school and then to get to the section in the book where she has like like um like not a diary but where she notes where they have publicly each one of them publicly have come out to the press like in any kind of article and express their disgust for brown and black people on a public level and it's like oh they don't teach us that part in school and it's like you know at this age i know 
how things work but to actually see it that's why i'm like it's not so much as hard or shocking but just bizarre when you think back to we're taught to think something completely different of them but this never comes up in school and what i think what made it hard for me was like my child's gonna go to school and they're gonna teach her the same thing they taught us or your poor fathers did this for the country they built this for the country so everybody it wasn't us for everybody it was for everybody that was a pale complexion it wasn't for us people it wasn't for us it wasn't for us brown and chocolate colored people i'm sorry and that made me realize like really realize like it's on like i have a child so it's like it's on us to kind of reinforce and really teach them when they're going like yeah they did this but then they also had these bills as well you can't teach one side and not the other side of the story you can't just teach children one side or oh, they was this this and that like well what about this public shit they was putting out in newspapers and articles about their public disgust and she lists off exactly she quotes everything that they say and that's what it makes me it really made me sit back and like damn like they never really teach us the other side, the other side of the story in school. You get taught that one side that they were so great and they did this, that, and this for the good of everybody in the country. But we leaving that part out. I also love that she didn't just throw the U.S. Uh, into the fire, even though we burning up anyway. She pointed out other countries and their massacres and their histories going out, going into the price of wealth and which is blood annihilation and destruction which is her words not mine but very much true i loved her essay women women race and what was it let me find it it was women race women race and memory she talked on how every female every woman wants to be a feminist and then how the feminist group which the being one big group okay let's start off with that everyone wants to be a feminist Feminist is the top of the food chain. That's the main. That's just the group. And then she goes to how the group then breaks down into anti-feminists, radicals, conservatives. And then she goes into how those group then breaks down again into being black feminists against white feminists. And then while all of that's going on, while we're fighting with each other off off of these many subgroups, we're all fighting against each other. The main thing that we were supposed to be together for over here, the men are still getting paid more than women just based off the race. Men are still getting offered and taking more executive and higher up roles than women based purely off of race. Even Not even off of what you're qualified because there are more women that are qualified for these lead jobs than the men. But oh, we're too busy over here fighting while they're still doing that. Still getting slapped on the wrist, still being able to be as sexist as they want because now we're fighting each other instead of fighting for equality with them. I love that, she, like I said, it wasn't just about a book just about race. She talked on race, she was talking on um, sexism, she talked on uh, the money problems that we're having, how our world is divided so much and not just by race, by so much other shit. I think dividing her speeches and her essays i loved reading her speech speeches the most i feel like i was just dropped in the audience like listening to her like live delivering these speech these speeches and it's just it her speeches weren't like making you scratch your head trying to figure out well what is she talking about what is she saying she talked very clear she was very much straight to the point it wasn't something where you had to try to decipher what she was talking about she was very much um this is what it is I loved reading it and it's like reading stuff like this like collections like this it makes me want to be able to listen to her to these speakers like in person but I can't because Toni Morrison has already passed away so it's like I would never get that chance to sit in an audience and sit in a room while she's like delivering something live like but it's like to know what they could have felt like for the people that were able to do that like that had to be something amazing like just to hear her talk so again being that this is a collection of her work she touched on a lot of things race issues of course how we want and how we want our race to be seen um what war has become culture as a whole not just us but different not just black people when i say us i mean everybody's culture as a whole human rights female empowerment she talked about art and advocacy for the arts and she talked about so much in this collection it was all 
fucking beautiful. There's not one part of this that I did not enjoy to read that I did like I, that I didn't like. Like I love the whole fucking book, and I definitely recommend it to people to read. Now, if there's an audio book, I would recommend an audio book too. But I feel like this book, like you'll get through it a lot faster with an audio book because you're just listening. But at the end of the day, I feel like this book specifically. If you like taking the time to just read it like physically to mark off the parts that you like that you can be able to go back and reread and I think that's a great idea for this book. I really enjoyed this book so fucking much. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. I recommend it. Like I said it took me a lot longer than I expected because it was just so much shit to get through. I just wanted to take my time and read it. Like I was really rereading sections marking off and I, um, I make sure I put my tabs. I will go back with a highlight and highlight like my favorite, favorite fucking parts within the fucking tabs. Like, it just, I just did so much while reading this and I really did like it. And then at the, and then at the same time, while I was reading this, I was kind of going through like, a, I don't really feel like reading phase two. So I, it wasn't something I was picking up every day, but it was something I thought, like, you know, you thinking about reading, but you don't really feel like reading. I was going through that a lot. I read and like, I really, I really want to read this book, but I just not in the mood. But yeah, anyway, I enjoyed this book. I wanted to come through and do my review for it because I just posted it on Goodreads and I didn't want to wait too long to do my video review for it because um, I noticed if I wait too long it'll never happen <laughs> so I'm gonna do that and I have one more video that I'm gonna be filming today for the Black Arthur Readathon I'm gonna film my TBR I hope you guys are all participating in that it's gonna be going on the whole month of February it's a bunch of lovely chocolate ladies that are going to be doing this readathon. And um, I'm going to get more into detail when I actually do the video. So yeah, thank you guys for watching my review video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And Stitch is my spirit animal. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.